So, um, welcome everybody. I am uh, I'm Aaron Jorgensen. I'm the program supervisor of Extend Learning. I work with both our, our LEARNS and our BEARS program. And then I'm going to um, pass this on to uh, my compadre, uh, uh, the, the AA squad, uh, Miss Angela Handy. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, we know that um, so many questions, such a time as this, we are very excited to come before you to share what we can with you and all of our families and students. Um, our, our current staff of the LEARNS program, they are here also. And we're really very fortunate to have this group of people working with us. Um, I think we can definitely say how proud we are of all of the strides that they're making and making sure that they present a program that will be very exciting for your kids during this distance um, state of affairs that we're in. Again, just wanted to say thank you so much for attending and recognizing the current state that we're in across our nation. Uh, we know that there's so many inequities and inequalities that are happening um, from so, so much of the unfortunate situations that we see in our streets. Um, and now that we're engaging back with our families and with our students, we want you to know that we will be providing, our programs will be providing a, a safe place for our students to come and meet and discuss whatever issues they are they need to address um, with their program specialists, with their leaders, um, just knowing that we would like to continue on um, as much as possible as we can. As we all know, back in March, uh, we all were sort of slammed into all of this at once and we have been learning and providing as much as we can for our families. Um, I think our programs have done an exceptional job getting up and started back in March, uh, making sure that they were still able to meet with your, your students, meet with the families, to continue homework support, enrichment support, all of those things. And we're just very pleased to be here tonight so that we can um, continue to address your concerns and let you know that we are doing our best to provide the best learns um, and those of you who may have students in bears, the best that we can for you. We have your students at the center and the focus of everything that we're doing. So thank you again for being here. And let me see, I'm still talking, I think I am. Um, just to give you a few program updates, we have been in some very serious discussions as it relates to our programs. Um, some of the questions that have been, Aaron, don't let me go into yours, but I'm just gonna keep flowing until you tell me to stop. Uh, yeah. We have been going over some of the things, some of the questions we had, about 22 families who responded to the questions. And one of the things that keep coming up in our from the families itself is that are we going to have a fee charges and again as we were as i was saying we were talking we've been talking with our program specialists we've been talking with our budget analysts and just trying to make sure that we can still provide a service to our families and right now at this time we are not going to be charging fees until further notice. We still have to meet with our budget analysts to make sure that we will be able to sustain our programs um, with what we have with our budgets. And we don't want the fees to hinder our families for, from participating. We want to include all of our families. We recognize that some we are all going through so much uh, economically right now. The financial situations for many of us are very strained and we don't want not to have our students attend because they are not able to provide fees. So hopefully that will uh, 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 
you know, relieve you of some of those questions and take that stressor off of you to know that we are doing our best to be able to provide our programs at this time um, without the fees. We will be coming back to that upon occasion. And, you know, as we learn more, we will always share this with our program specialists and they in turn will share this with our families. So that's one less stressor um, that you have to worry about this evening. And are you on next, Aaron? I'm sorry, because I can't sure. see. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I have, uh, there you said for the agenda for tonight. So we have, um, um, I'll, I'll just go next. Um, so we have um, the current state guidelines. So um, on, uh, let me just make sure I can, I can see everything here. So on, on June 29th, uh, Governor Newsom approved the Senate Bill 98. And this does, um, it provides CDE the authority to, to waive parts of ed code. And um, our program is written into ed code. And so what that means is that our program hours, um, grant rejections due to attendance. So um, to explain that, but um, these, in these areas, um, the state will not be following ed code. And so in a typical year, we have to meet a certain amount of attendance for each site. And um, if we do not meet that attendance level, uh, then we, our, our grant is, is cut. And this is the, the it's known as the ACES grant with the state. Um, thankfully, we have not, that has not happened for our program for a few years. Um, and this year, this past spring, and then into this year with us having to be, um, with us going through the pandemic um, and attendance um, being an issue, the state does recognize that and is waiving um, waiving the ability for them to cut our, our grants during this time. So that's great news for us. Our funding is at the same level where we were last, last year in regard to our, um, to our ACES grant. And just to give you an idea, um, the ACES grant uh, this past year provided about, uh, I think it was about 45% of our budget. And the remaining amount was coming from, um, is coming from program fees. And so um, we are thankful that almost half of our funding is insured for, for this year. The other areas in which this is applying to is uh, pupil to staff ratio requirements. Um, so in this current re requirements, as many of you know, is um, we have 20 to one, which is students to, um, to our adult staff members. And um, so that, they're saying also may be waived during this time. Um, we are not looking at waiving that. Um, and the other area when they're waiving the program hours, that relates to um, if we are able to help support at other times during the day, we are able to do so. Because currently the, the ACES, our program, the LEARNS program, um, the requirement is for us to be open once school is closed until six o'clock. And in the morning at our sites that have a morning program, it's um, we're required to be open from, from 7.30 until the start of the school day. Um, but now what the state is saying is that if, they're, if we are able to provide other help during the day, we may be allowed to do so. The other thing I wanted to mention on this slide is uh, with the current state guidelines, we, have, um, we are still needing to take attendance. So we will still be asking, um, we will still be tracking the attendance um, by, your by your children in our programs. And um, that will just be um, simply as if they are able to, to show up for um, any, any time during our program, we will count them as attending. Um, this is just for the state wanting to um, know uh, how many students we are able to continue to help and families during this time. So if they are able to attend for a portion of the time, we will count them for, for the day. This is unlike our usual program where we track the actual hours they're signed in and then when they are picked up, we will just be tracking if they are able to show up for any portion of the time, we will be including them in our attendance. 
All right, and um, Angela, program updates. Okay, so as I stated earlier, fees are not gonna be collected at this time. However, we are gonna encourage as if possible donations. Um, and that is up for discussion, you know, with our program specialist and Aaron and myself. Um, so just keep that in mind. We're not, we don't have that set chart that we've used in the past for families to pay. So just, just please be reassured that the fees um, are not going to be required as of this distance learning uh, experience. So this is what we have for the programs for the following hours, the elementary school from 2.30 to 5.30 middle school from 1 30 to 4 30 but again as Aaron was sharing the students are not they don't have to be in there for the entire time because of the stipulations that we have been granted uh, for our attendance as long as the students um, are there for some portion of the time we're, be, we're being very flexible with this and that's the, the term that has been used quite often with um, the California after school network President Michael Funk, let us all be flexible during this time because we do understand that this is very unusual and it's not going to look like what we have done in the past. So keeping that um, in our minds, we just we want the kids to be with their leaders as much as possible. And we know that that's not going to be the case for everybody. Um, meals. We will be providing students snacks and it will be according to this you know monday wednesday and friday from seven to nine o'clock and we will still be working all of this out students can pick up their meals along with snacks that will be included as well and you don't have to go to your school site you can go wherever uh, the curbside is available probably somewhere closer to you uh, so like if you were a student that goes to craigmont or to uh, you may be able to go to a site that's closer to your residential area. So we will still be able to have the snacks and we will be able to count the, the students, um, those who will be participating in our snack program as well. So we wanted to, um, as Angela mentioned earlier, we wanted to recognize, um, I want to thank um, our staff who made the quick adjustment in um, the spring, once we found out, all found out that we would be going into a shelter in place and um, we're able to jump in to start providing these services online. This is something that we, uh, none of us had experience with. And um, so I just wanna recognize that and thank all of them for doing that. And they are continuing to work on that. And um, we have had the chance to um, participate in trainings um, in order to uh, work on our skills in providing the distance learning experience and the online online programming. And so, um, as was mentioned, we are um, we we're currently looking at offering our program from 2.30 to 5.30 with elementary schools and 1.30 to 4.30 with the middle schools. And at this point, I wanted to open up to some of our, our site leaders, our, our program specialists, um, and have them share a little bit about um, what we'll be offering. So I wanted to invite Brazil McIntyre, who is our leader at Sylvia Mendes. She will first share uh, a little bit about what um, they will be offering for this year. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. We are all so excited to have you here in the room. Um, so what we have been doing for our Sylvia Mendes distance learning virtual after school program besides learning all of the letters and that big mouthful um we have been doing a lot of interactive games with the kids so kind of like some real really engaging type things that are that are constantly um you know moving and keeping their attention we also um well those games are academic games as well as just kind of enriching fun games um, we also um, are providing yoga. Our wonderful Miss Sally is doing um, yoga every day, which has been really wonderful. Your daddy. 
we've been doing some mindfulness <laughs> work as well as some work on some SEL things and just sort of um, getting our feelings out and, and kind of discussing, having these different discussions about what we've been doing this whole time. Um, we also have been doing some read alouds and some um, interesting chapter books we're working on gearing up towards um, completing uh and we've just been doing um we've been learning dance moves and we really have been also um just talking to our students and really seeing what things they've been doing and what things they'd like to do and with that um you know we're just trying to keep it lively and entertaining for not only the students but us um staff as well you know we really enjoy it and so it's been really just such a wonderful pleasure um, seeing our students that we miss so much. Um, it's just really, you know, warms our hearts. So I, I think the, the smiles are, are proof enough uh, for me that it definitely is um, something fun and, and something to do. <laughs> So thank you. And again, I'm at Sylvia Mendez. Um, and so I want to give a shout out to all my Sylvia Mendez parents that I see in the house. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Brazil. Um, and uh, then I want to open up uh, to as well, um, uh, uh, Mr. Jason Neely, our uh, leader at Thousand Oaks. And I just want him to be able to share a little bit about what um, they are they will be offering um, at Thousand Oaks. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Hello, everyone. Um, we have not started yet, um, although um, with the hard work of our group leaders here at Thousand Oaks, we did immediately transition to distance learning um, in the spring. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that because. Um, you know, it was something that we've never done before and they kind of hit the ground running and and I think the students who participated had a lot of fun. I hope to continue some of those activities. Um, we did some scavenger hunts, um, some word games like categories, um, some step-by-step -step drawing. Um, but my, my biggest hope for um, coming back into this new year of programming is um, emotional support. So we'll be here to to help with homework, um, but I want I want all you families to know that we're here um, as we always are, even before COVID, um, to hear the concerns and feelings of your children and be here to listen um, and to help them navigate those those feelings. Um, uh, we'll have creative writing again, hopefully, which will allow kids to get their their feelings out. Um, by writing. Um, for me, that's always a, a, a good way to express myself. Um, I personally am doing a book club um, for some Black and Latino boys, and I hope to grow that um, during distance learning. Um, but again, um, the, the, the one thing I want to stress is um, the emotional support um, and I think that's been a big key to why our program has been so successful over many years. Um, and I think it will be key in, in ensuring that our kids come back to in-person learning, um, knowing that they're cared about and loved. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, that's very well said. That's one thing that when our meetings is, we were meeting regularly um, during the closures and then they um, all of our program specialists came back in late July getting to get ready for this year and they have all been expressing how they have been wanting to make sure that they're able to check on the students and just the care for all of them is so evident in all they're saying so thanks thank you Jason thanks Brazil now I would like to go over to um, LaShonda Rokemore and she is our um, learns leader over at King to be able to share a little bit about what um, they are doing at King, and 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 I want to highlight too that um, our all of our middle school leaders have really been doing a great job in working together, and um, this has really brought them together to be able to offer uh, 
great programming for all of our middle school students. So LaShawn's gonna go into a little of the details about that. Hello everyone. My name once again is LaShonda Rockmore. I am the program coordinator at King Middle School. Uh, I'll be real brief as I didn't know that I was talking to the last minute, but it's okay. I'm always ready and prepared. Um, currently right now, we don't have our enrichment classes starting. They will be starting the week of September 14th, but what we are doing is very unique. Um, we are meeting with our, the first week of school, we met with our parents and allowed the parents to express uh, what they're looking for in our after school program. And uh, me and my staff was able to express what direction we're going um, distance learning wise. Um, this week we were able to break off all of our students by grade level and kind of really get to know them, understand them and let them see our faces. Um, we did really express, as Jason said, um, talking about the social emotional um, aspect of all of our students as well as ourselves as adults. This is a um, new norm and we want to make sure that we're giving all of our students a platform to be able to express themselves talk about how they're feeling and you know things that they might want to change um, like i said this is a new norm um, some of the enrichment classes that we will be offering at king um, is a wide variety uh, we have a social hour which is a time where the kids can come and just hang out talk to each other peer to peer uh, peer to staff member uh, we have an entrepreneur class, which is like a business class. Um, that's one of our classes that we've linked all three together with all of our three middle schools. So that is a class that Willard, Longfellow, and King will be participating in all together. Um, we have kickboxing. Um, we have Beam, which is a science group out of Cal. Um, we have spoken word, which is also another class that's um, between all three middle school. Uh, we have yarn crafting, embroidery and needle felting. Um, we have Writers Arise, uh, a couple of sports classes that some of the ADs have put together. They made a survey um, for the middle school kids. And so we're all just trying to group together as three middle schools and try to make sure we're giving um, an active and exciting platform and place for them to go after school. That's it. Thank you, LaShonda. Welcome. All right, we will move on. Um, Angela, registration. Okay, so moving on to the registration process. Uh, thank you all for sharing that information to our family so they know what's out there. Um, at this time, we still need to be able to count our students for our attendance purposes. So we will need for you to register your students if you have not already done so. So the information is right there on the screen. Um, please make sure that you have you know, completed that format. Many of you have already done that and that's wonderful. We just wanna make sure that we are being able to count those students as it relates to the accountability pieces for our attendance for the state. And again, um, once in-person program is allowed to resume, families will be notified about the registration process. And I know that many of you have asked if you can just um, preserve your spot, um, but we wanna make sure that we are opening it up again, making sure that all families are given the opportunity to register and to come in. Um, as soon as we know what the district is allowing us to do as far as in-person, we will be in constant communication with our staff so that they will be in communication with you as well. We don't wanna miss out on anyone and we wanna make sure that everyone, and I do mean everyone has the opportunity to be able to register. If they need some support with that registration process, we will you know, be able to hopefully give that support as well. Um, but this is, this is the, the direction that we're gonna go. And if you are familiar with the ASAP um, format, it places all of our students on a wait list. So please do not get alarmed when, when we're able to do this. If you see that your student, you've already gone through the process, you put all your information in, and then you see that you are waitlisted. That's just the format of this platform that we use. So we don't want you to be alarmed and we wanted to put that out there because many times Aaron and I receive 
several emails saying, well, I, I, I registered at the, the given time and now I'm waitlisted. Does that mean that I am not in the program? No, that's just the formality of that particular platform that we use. One other thing I just want to um, highlight, so that um, for registration, that is also on our LEARNS website. Um, you don't have to um, frantically be typing this in. If you aren't registered right now, you can go to the LEARNS website, and it's about halfway down the page. Um, next we have, um, so we wanted to start with um, going into question and answers. Um, we, uh, so again, I just want to mention we had received uh, about 22 responses to, um, to our, our requests for questions. And we were able to go over many of the questions revolved around um, the re registration. Um, if I'm not attending currently, will I still be, will I still have a spot in the program? Um, if I, if I, what are the fees that are being charged? Um, and, um, what was the program looking like? So I feel that we would be able to answer most of those questions so far in our in our um, presentation. And um, I wanted to look into uh, one other thing that was asked that we didn't discuss specifically was uh, in person programming. So um, that is something uh, that we are in this have been in discussion with district administration since the beginning of the shelter in place. Um, and with our state um, consultants, um, as well as with the city. And at this point, at this time, we are not um, planning any in-person programming. Um, I know for some of you, I have heard directly from some of you, we have heard directly from some of you that that is a real need. We understand that, as you saw a little earlier. I understand it too, with a six and a three-year-old with me. Um, and right now we uh, are, we do not, we are not offering in-person programming and we don't have any current plans for in-person programming. We are in constant communication with the district administration around, um, around this. And if anything changes, we will communicate that out um, with all of you. Um, and then uh, I wanted to see, we'll just go ahead and um, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then uh, I just want to make sure I go into um, if there are any other um, any other questions that are coming up. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the Q and A section at the bottom of the screen. Should be at the bottom of your screen if you're on your computer. Uh, and then um, we will just have this time. Uh, we don't see going the full hour this evening. Um, and uh, but I just want to make sure that there is a chance for any other questions to come up? So one question that's coming up was how can um, how can we donate? So um, currently we have disabled all of the um, the charging of of families. Uh, and if you would like to donate, this is actually something that we're um, is new um, since we have not in the past had a structured way for us to accept donations. But in looking at our um, online program ASAP, uh, ASAP, sorry, we would, um, families can contact their, their site leader, their program specialist, and they can request for, um, for a charge to be made if you have, um, uh, for example, a credit card or a debit card linked to your account. So um, we'd have to look at that into a little, a little bit more but you, if you are able to donate um, and um, you would like to do so, please contact um, either Angela or me, or you can also contact your program specialist and we'll be working with them to get out the, um, how that can be done. Um, but we, it should be, we should be able to do it with, if you currently have, um, credit card or debit card um, associated with your, um, with, with your, um, uh, words are escaping me, um, with your registration on ASAP. Um, so the question was, uh, for read registration, previously registered kids were given priority. Will that still be the case for in-person 
re-registration if it's middle of 2020, 2021 school year. So um, with this being an unprecedented time, um, we, and with us um, offering um, really a very different program than we have offered before, um, what we are planning is to have registration be opened up again for all families. And that will happen as soon as we have that information. So the priority is not being given to families who were registered before. Um, we just please look for that information. Once we have an idea of when we may be able to reopen, we will make sure that that goes out early. And so please do look for communication from your, um, your site leader. Um, there's another question about registration and receiving confirmation and confirming if the child is registered. Um, if you haven't received a confirmation, please do check in with your, the program specialist for your site. Uh, and um, you can see all of, all, of, uh, all of the program specialists on the screen, except unfortunately I, did, I do see that our, the leader for Washington is not here right now. Um, but if you have, um, if you are needing to confirm registration, please do contact them and um, they will be able to let you know if your child has been registered. Hey, Aaron, I do believe John is here, but he's not logged in as a pan panelist. Got it. Great. Thank you, Jason. And sorry about that, John. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. Um, and uh, the next one, um, next question we have, uh, can a child attend part-time? Yes. Um, really, the goal of our program right now is to um, we are wanting to service the needs of the the students and the families as, as best as possible as Angela touched on earlier um, it's we are working to be as flexible as we can this year to really help our families it's during these unprecedented times so um, yeah so Yes, we children can attend at any time that they would like or um, whenever they would, um, whenever, uh, whenever can help them. Um, let me see here. Angela, do you see any other questions here that you'd like to answer? Um, there's one pertaining to a kindergarten family at Sylvia Mendez. Uh oh, it just, okay, there it is. Um, they're new to the distance format. Our students going to be grouped by grade level. And I believe that is going to be the goal of each of the sites to make sure that the students are in their perspective grade levels with their perspective leader of that grade. And you can always um, email Brazil McIntyre and she will be able to give you more information on that. And uh, is there a way to get a rundown schedule on programming for each site? I mean, that is a possibility. Um, I think all of those are gonna be listed on the, the each school site. Um, this, the program specialists are working on that right now to have all of that information readily available. And you can kind of see what's happening at each of our sites. Let's see, does it help funding for the program for next year if our kids attend online? Should we make an effort for our kids to participate now? even if we don't actually need to. Of course, we want, we want to make sure that our kids are there. And um, as Erin was saying, you know, right now we have funds and we're still working things out with our budget analysts and getting additional information from the state. We, would, we, we just want your kids, you know, we want to make that perfectly clear. We want your kids to be participating and we do appreciate any effort that families are making, but we don't want you to feel that if you're not um, being able to, to pay on a regular basis that your students are not going to be with us. We want your kids. I can't say that enough. And just make sure that, you know, you understand that we will keep you informed as we learn more as, a, as it relates to next school year, as it relates to next school the 2021-2022. Uh, we don't have all of those answers right now, 
and we're still constantly in um, communication with individuals that we work with with the state and we pass that on to our program specialists and we will continue to do that. Um, another question we have is um, if you were registered for the 2021 school year, which we opened up on April 1st of this past year, when we were still unsure about what was going to be happening. Um, so recognize that there are many families that had opened that had already registered for the school year. Um, and the question is if they would have to families have to re register. Yes, that is correct. Um, since we don't know when we will be able to um, reopen our in person program. Um, we will need to have families re register once we have those um, once we have that timing. Um, see, um, I think that is about it for right now. Um, and then, see, so yeah, I have a question is, is there a need that kids can be registered on a, a need basis when a person, um, when in person time is possible? So I, I believe what that's asking is, um, uh, can students attend when when they are able. Um, we recognize, and we've heard from many of you, we recognize that um, the days are long and I recognize it as watching a six-year-old sit through three to four hours of working during the school day. Uh, and so, um, yes, we, as Angela said, we would love to have your students attend um, whenever they're available. Um, and so um, please have them attend when they are able. Uh, I believe that answers the questions right now. We will just wait for another minute or two in case any other questions are coming up. Please again, do type them into the Q&A section. Um, and I believe, I'm just gonna double check here. Um, and I just wanna recognize, um, sorry, John, I, did, I do see you on there and yeah, John, John Alfred Leakes, the program specialist at Washington. He has been here, he just wasn't, for some reason we don't have him on the screen with us um, this evening, but um, John Alfred Leakes is the program specialist at Washington. And um, so I just wanna recognize that. Um, are there any last questions? Learns Leaders, is there anything else that you would like to share that is coming up in the questions or anything else that may have come up for you um, that you would like to share uh, at this time? I, I would like to just encourage people to, um, to try us out and see what we're doing. Um, we really have been working hard to get some really good programming um, and, and the thing is that we need the kids to give it to them. So, um, you know, give it a try. I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions swirling around, so it can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes to, um, to you know, participate in new things and all of that, but we do just encourage um, you to give it a try. And again, we're, I know at Sylvia Mendez, we're really just listening to, um, the kids too, you know? So there may be some ideas that they have um, that could um, really change how some of these um, activities work out. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, hi everyone, this is Mr. Hill uh, from BAM. Uh, I think part of the reason why we would encourage your kid to come and participate uh, and learn social distancing um, a virtual program is because a part of the strength of our programs or one of the biggest strengths of our program is community um, and I think that's what's attracted a lot of the parents to our programs when kindergartners come in what helps make that day not as not as crazy and long right coming to after school where they have uh, a nice hub of people that they know they're going to come to every day and I think because we've had so much um, uncertainty uh, I think this space is a space where those kids know that when they come and see us, they know what they're getting from us. And I think that's the draw. I think um, coming and being with us in this space now is maybe even more important than what we've had before. Um, because when we come back, right, like we, we want everyone to be 
as aligned as possible. Um, and I think there's a lot of things dividing us, uh, even though there are a lot of similarities that we have, I think the world is focusing on the things that make us different. Um, and I think this space is a space that allows us to bring us together. Um, and I think everyone, uh, the ITs, the administrators at our school sites, uh, I think they value that as well. Um, and we hope that you remember um, our interactions uh, and the care that we have for your kids, not just this year, but all of the years that they've been with us. Um, those hours mean a lot to us. Um, we spend a lot of time with your kids and we like them actually. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why, you know, your families mean a lot to our schools and we want to keep extending to you. Well, well said, Mr. Hill. Um, and with that, I mean, I, I'm not ready to just leave it at that. Um, but, uh, but really, um, I, I just, just checking one last time, is there any hands up? You can raise your hand. Um, we can see that. And I'm just checking one last time for any questions in the Q&A. Um, all right. I, that looks to be about it. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for at attending this evening. Um, and I just wanted to, um, again, just express thanks for all of our staff and our leaders. Um, they are, as has been said, um, we really care about your children and um, especially in this time. And we look forward to seeing them and helping support them and all of you um, as, as we navigate this time. And uh, Ms. Handy, I'll, I'll pass it off to you for final word. Uh, just want to say thank you. Um, the pictures of the leaders that you see before us, um, I, I so appreciate all of the work that you do for our students and I know your staff are here as well. I've received some text messages to let, them know, let me know that they were here as well. The kids, I can't speak enough about the students. The students are at the core of our programs and I think that has already been established this evening. I don't want to take anything away. So families, please reach out to your program specialist at the sites, register your kids. Um, I, I've seen some really wonderful things on the days that I've been able to tap into some of the, the, the Zoom calls and it's, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna make history because of your kids being with us. So please join us this year. If you have any additional questions, please contact myself or Aaron or the program specialist. We are here for you. We are here for your kids. And with that, I, I wish you all a very well school year. We're all in this together. We're not gonna leave anybody behind. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you.